In a way, eating pork is a taste of the eschaton. What do the food laws in Leviticus mean today? In my last video, I did a deep dive into some of these laws to explain why the Bible says not to eat pork. These laws aren't binding on Christians today, but we should still learn from them because the symbolism behind them teaches us how to live. But before I get to that, I need to show you what I made with all this bacon. This is Hungry Theologian, helping you taste and see that the Lord is good. Pork and apple is one of those classic flavor combinations that can provide a great foundation to experiment on. So I'm gonna show you how to make a bacon and apple quiche. You can make this quiche with a standard short crust pastry, but I wanted to experiment with something different, so I'm doing a hash brown crust. Start by shredding two russet potatoes on a box grater. I made mine with one russet potato and one sweet potato, but I think the flavor of the sweet potato clashed with this quiche a bit. For a simpler quiche, the sweet potato would be great. For this one, I'd recommend you just use russet potatoes. Grate the potatoes directly into a kitchen towel so you can squeeze the liquid out of them after you're done. This will help them form into a better crust. Add the potatoes to a large bowl along with one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon paprika, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, and a third of a cup or 40 grams of all-purpose flour. Mix well to distribute the seasonings, then add one egg and mix again with your hands until the egg is well distributed and you have a mixture that can clump up pretty well. Grease a nine inch pie dish with cooking spray, then add your potato mixture and press it in with your hands. The goal is to get an even crust while avoiding any holes or gaps. For the edges, I find that it works well to hold one hand on the outside while pushing with the other hand from the inside. Bake in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 25 to 30 minutes until your crust has firmed up and only has some slight browning around the edges. Take it out of the oven and press the base and edges in with the back of a spoon if they've lifted off the pan at all. Then brush the whole thing with a beaten egg to create a seal for the filling and bake for another five minutes. While it's baking, you can start working on the filling. Peel, core, and chop two large apples. I recommend one Granny Smith and one Fuji for some balance and variety in flavors. Now for the other star of the show. Cook eight to 10 slices of high quality bacon. You really wanna shell out for the good bacon for this recipe since we're highlighting the pork and apple. The best way to evenly cook bacon is to start it on a cold pan, then turn on the heat. As the heat comes up, the fat will render and the meat of the bacon will cook in that rendered fat. If the bacon sizzles when you put it in the pan, you're doing it wrong. It takes a little longer this way than the way most home cooks do bacon in a hot pan, but it cooks much more evenly. If you're a fan of bacon, click the like button and help this video reach more people. Cooking bacon in the oven is even simpler for nice even cooking, but for this recipe, I'm assuming that you're using the oven to cook the crust. When the bacon is nice and crisp, remove from the pan and drain on some paper towels. Leave a tablespoon or so of the bacon fat in your pan and add the chopped apples along with one teaspoon each of minced fresh rosemary, salt, and pepper. Saute the apples until they're soft and lightly browned. You're not trying to crisp them up because you want some textural contrast between the bacon and the apples. Some of mine ended up getting a little too brown because I was setting up the camera to take the crust out of the oven. Now it's time to assemble. Add your apples in an even layer, followed by the bacon, chopped, and a quarter cup of crumbled blue cheese. I know blue cheese can be controversial, so if you don't like blue cheese, you could substitute a high quality feta. Whisk four large eggs and one and a third cups of heavy cream in a large bowl, then place your quiche shell onto a baking sheet and pour on the egg mixture. This helps you move it to the oven without spilling. Bake in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 to 40 minutes until lightly browned on top and almost all firm. You still want a slight jiggle in the middle when you take it out. Cool on a wire rack for 10 to 15 minutes and enjoy. In my last video, I went over some of the main approaches that I've seen to interpreting the Old Testament law that restricts the eating of pork. And like I said earlier, these laws are no longer binding on Christians because we live in the new covenant after the coming of Christ. James Jordan describes how just as God now dwells among his people without the barriers of the temple or the tabernacle, we're now permitted to bring these forbidden foods into the temples of our bodies. In a way, eating pork is a taste of the eschaton. So we should celebrate the blessing of eating pork. But that doesn't mean you should skip over the dietary laws because they don't apply to you. The lessons that God was teaching Israel through the dietary laws are still relevant to us today. One thing the dietary laws are teaching is that the people of God should be set apart, holy, 
rather than following the way of the serpent. Remember that the restriction on land animals talked about clean animals needing to have cloven hooves and chewing the cud. Hooves separate an animal from the dirt of the ground where the serpent slithers, and cloven hooves represent the ability to distinguish between life and death so that we can choose life. Chewing the cud contrasts with the haste of the serpent in swallowing its food whole and represents the way that we should patiently meditate on God's word and the ways that he's revealed himself in nature. So when we study the dietary laws and read this restriction on eating pork, I think our minds should go to the book of Proverbs and the call of Lady Wisdom to set aside foolishness and walk in the way of understanding. I have some more content coming on the dietary laws and when that's ready, I'll link to it here. But until then, go make some bacon and taste and see that the Lord is good.